Hi and welcome to this vlog, not particularly nice subject this but I just thought I'd talk a little bit about um, boats sinking on the cut, uh, it's something that's um, not an everyday occurrence, it happens now and again but um, when you see it it's uh, not, particularly, not particularly nice sight and um, for a boater it's, I think it's, it's the worst nightmare really because um, uh, you know, whether, whether it be just a, a, a day boat or um, a small cruiser uh, to, to a, a bigger narrow boat or, or, or all these massive great um, expensive cruisers um, it, it can be particularly uh, concerning and, and, and the damage it can do uh, the water damage to the hull and the, and the boat itself um, as well as the, uh, the boat electrics and, and the damage to the engine um, not to mention uh, personal effects uh, uh, that, that, that can get destroyed by the, the water and the silt and mud that can ingress into the into the boat when it sinks and um, this is even more so when when, um, when you live aboard when it's all your possessions are on that boat and it all goes down it can be devastating so yeah that's why it's really um, yeah a boat, probably a boat's worst nightmare really to, to sink it's uh, it's something that's always at the back of your mind and uh, I'll never forget when we first borrowed our friend's boat and um, we, we'd just gone to bed and it was quiet peaceful outside and um, you just hear this sort of echoey dripping sounds if something was dripping inside the hull and you sort of think what's that what's that coming from and um, that's yeah, quite worrying it did sound like we had a leak somewhere but um, yeah it turns out all it was was um, just the sound of um, some some ducks they're just pecking on the algae on the on the outside of the boat and it just sounded from the inside it sounds quite bad uh, so you get a lot of sounds like this, it could be you know, like birds just pecking at the back side of the boat uh, it may be like air bubbles coming up from the uh, uh, the bed of the canal or the river uh, or, or just, a, just a fish or a, a mink just um, swishing past you know it can make a quite a sound when it goes past the boat so yeah <laughs> usually it's nothing to worry about whatsoever so there's, uh, there's many reasons why a, a boat could sink um, so firstly um, it could come adrift um, maybe you know the, the pins get pulled um, so you know if a boat goes past quite fast and it causes a bit of a swell it can pull on the on the lines and uh, the mooring pins could come out so that could make a boat go adrift yeah or uh, it, it could just be uh, a loss of power and, and steering uh, so then uh, if you're in a, on a river you could just be drifting down then with the current um, which is what happened to us actually it was quite a scary time um, if you haven't seen our video of Trent disaster uh, that's where we were we were just uh, drifting down the river and um, when it's drifting like that you just don't know where it's going to end up it, it, you, you could hit a tree um, the bridge um, and it depends how you hit it, it just, you just hit the front and it just tips it over it could easily get water in and um, yeah so it, it, it could be um, it, it, if it's if it sits on a bank it sits on a bank somewhere if it hits a bank and then if it's tidal the tide goes out uh, it could tip the boat over on the side of the bank and when it comes in it might just come in through the windows and then that's it it's uh it's sort of job done really uh, the, the boat could go down now, secondly it's ma mainly on the canals it's um when the paddles on a lock or the lock gates or both are left open so all the water comes down through from the top pound straight through a lock into the pound below then that sort of just drains the top pound and if you're moored there if you're well if you're lucky yeah, you might just rest on the bed um, quite level and then when, they're restored, when, the, when the levels are restored water levels are restored you come back up and um, away you go but um, if, you, if your lines are quite tight it could mean that your boat tips over uh, sideways and uh, if you're not there to loosen them and the water levels are, are restored it could mean your boat doesn't upright it, the water comes in through the windows or through the uh, the stern or the bow of the boat and um, there, again that's, that's a, a scenario where the boat could sink. Uh, third case scenario again involving locks is, uh, is, is when a boat uh, is in a lock and um, the water level uh, is changing going up or down so um, when, it's, when it's going down at uh, the bo bottom of the, uh, the lock there's a sill and um, if your boat's not far enough forward and the level goes down you can catch the stern of your boat on the sill and likewise if you're going up on the top lock gate you may find that the 
the bow of the boat gets caught underneath some woodwork, um, jams in, and then uh, so the, the, the water level goes up, the front of the boat stays jammed in, and um, so yeah, you lose le you lose the level. Which is, so in both these cases, you, you the, the level of the boat changes, and um, tipping forward or backwards, and that's a scenario where water could come in, and, and that happens so quickly. There's a video here of um, a boat. This is on the uh, the Kent and Avon, and it just went down in about 20 seconds, and um, it's you just it's just so fast. It's a job to react to change the water levels quickly enough before. Uh, before it all goes horribly wrong unfortunately so the last sort of case where it where a boat could go down is um is really when a, a boat is uh poorly maintained or in bad condition um this is particularly so of, of old cruisers uh fiberglass cruisers where you know the, the fiberglass can become blistered in time it becomes fragile quite weak and any little knocks can penetrate the fiberglass and then start a small little leak which can get worse and worse and worse and um, yeah, they are quite vulnerable to, to sink in these, these plastic cruisers. Um, and, and also where it's badly maintained relating to um, seals, like a prop, prop shaft seal, for instance, if that's not maintained well, water can come into the engine bilge. If the bilge pump's not working correctly, it fills up with that, you know. In. And um, particularly, again, if, you know, if the boat's been left, that happens quite a lot. If someone sort of left the boat for a few days and um, yeah, you come back and it's uh, full of water and it's gone down. So. What happens when the boat sinks? Well, ideally, um, I mean, the CRT would like it to be contained with a, an environmental boom so that no fluids from the engine can uh, pollute the, the waterways. Um, so that's probably the, 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 the best that can happen is that they can, it can be protected with, with a, a boom. But as to regards to, to getting the boat back up, um, but the, the best way to do it is to completely enclose the hull of the boat right around underneath the boat and up the sides with a, a strong tarpaulin um, secure it up around the top of the boat and then um, uh, if there's windows on the boat it's probably it's best to have some uh, wooden templates on the outside of the boat you really need some pretty heavy duty pumps uh, like a maybe like a five inch bore pump so you can get as much water out as the boat as quickly as possible. So you want to get it out obviously quicker, you want to pump it out quicker than it can actually come in. So you're actually getting more water out of the boat. And as it, it has soon come up, after a few minutes, you sort of know that uh, it's, it's it's starting to float again and, and it doesn't take too long if you've got good quality pumps. The other way of doing it is uh, to crane it out. I mean, obviously this is very expensive. Uh, sometimes you can't get the equipment to where the boat sunk very easily. Um, but um, yeah, often th th that can be a way of getting it out if if you can get the equipment to it, but uh, it's not always possible to do that. So uh, the River and Canal Rescue uh, are experts at doing this. So that they, they rescue quite a few boats um, and they've got loads of knowledge and experience of what to do with different types of boats, how to get them out. Um, and um, yeah, they've had, they've had lots of experience of this. They did a big project down in the south of France once, raising some boats. And there was a, a failure, water supply failure down at Bath a couple of years, probably a couple of three years ago, and I think it was about 40 boats down there, and, and uh, yeah, they managed to, to get most of those boats afloat quite quickly uh, with, with, with the expertise that they've got. So um, yeah, it's well worth having their membership. Um, you, there's three levels of membership. We've only got the, the lowest one, but that does give you a, a call out from them uh, should you need them. So I'm really doing this vlog because we've come across a few boats uh, when we've been traveling around um, like I say, it's not a nice sight to see. Uh, this this one last summer, a lovely narrow boat, uh, got caught in the lock and uh, it went down. Uh, and um, yeah, the, the owner I think was uh, traveling on his own, so he was trying to operate the lock and uh, keep an eye on the boat at the same time. So and that's one of those scenarios where it's, it's it just all happened so quickly. Now, this second one here was was just this summer actually. This was at, uh, at Thorn on the South Yorkshire Navigation. This old cruiser, lovely old wooden cruiser, big thing. Um, the year before, we'd seen a, an elderly couple living on it. Um, but from what we understand, it was sold quite recently and um, the new owners uh, took it from the former marina and, and in the process of taking it across to the other side of the canal, it started taking on water and, and, and soon went down. Um, so yeah, this, this, one's, uh, this one's still currently in the water, I think. 
but uh, but the saddest one for us was down in Bath. Uh, I think it's 2019. Uh, we were down there at Christmas, and there was a, an old cruiser more just behind us. So um, we, we'd gone away to see family Christmas Day, Boxing Day, and we came back the, the following day, and and it had sunk. And um, yeah, it's, it's what what a bad time of year for it to happen over Christmas, and. The couple uh, came back to it, and they had been away themselves for a couple of days, and um, they were absolutely devastated. It was it was their home, you know, the young family trying to make way in life, and um, yeah, all their possessions were on it. Um, yeah, so very very sad. Um, luckily, I had a relative in Bristol, so uh, I, I managed to ferry them back and forth to there for a few days. Um, there's a company on the Kent and Avon called the Floaty Boat Company and um, they're a charity and, and they specialise in, in raising boats that have sunk and they've got lots of pumps and tarpaulins. Uh, yeah, a good group of uh, volunteers came along a couple of days and with a couple um, that lived on board they tried to get it up but it just didn't work, there's no way they're going to do it. Um, and so unfortunately it's still there and that was despite a, a, a very generous local person uh, who um, stumped up the money to get a very powerful pump for them to hire one to, to get it out but it wouldn't, it wouldn't come up um, so unfortunately um, that was it for that one but uh, this is couple I would do with my other determination because uh, they, they actually purchased another very elderly shell of a boat and over the course of the next couple of days um, they, they took the, the tarpaulin the wooden framework off the old boat that was sunk in the canal and they made a little camp and put it on the towpath, and they and they stayed in that for uh, a couple of nights. And this was getting towards New Year. It was cold, um, but yeah, they were determined to do something about it. So they they salvaged everything they could from the old boat, and they kitted the new one out. And um, yeah, as far as I know, that they're, they're still on it. So um, if you're watching this, I'm not going to name you, but you know who you are. And um, I wish you all the very best, and I do hope that you are still afloat and uh, out on the waterways. Yeah, so it's a, bit, it's a bit of a gloomy subject, but uh, please do bear in mind that this isn't, <laughs> this isn't something that happens very often. You see, you see these pictures uh, like I'm putting on here now, but the uh, majority of the time, most boats are floating around on the waterways, no problem whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, it is a rare occurrence, but like I say, it'll be nice to see when it happens. So, uh, that's about it for this vlog. I know I did say I was going to do the next one about um, the Fosdyke Canal from Torxley down to Lincoln. Uh, but that will be the one to follow this one. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching this. So, and I'll see you again next time. And uh, if you can subscribe, please do. And um, hit the thumbs up. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching then. Bye.